Hello all, and welcome back to Midnight Movie Reviews. I am, of course, am Vincent Rains. I'm Raven Shadow. Hope you guys enjoyed your little break. Hadn't seen us in a while. Yeah, uh, this has been the first show since our end of year show. Yeah. And uh, 2021's not looking much better. Uh, you know, I could not even tell you what's in theaters right now. I mean, there's some theaters that's opened back up. There's a one near us that just recently opened. Couldn't tell you what's playing. I've, I've heard a few titles of things that are supposed to come out this year, but I've basically kept or stopped keeping track of like modern movies, but still going back and watching the old stuff as you can see what we're about to talk about. Yeah, like I know uh, my wife and I were just, you know, had nothing really to do a couple weeks ago and just kind of I thought, you yeah, know, maybe we'll just go to the movies. You know, we ain't done that in a while. We've had a gift card for the movies. Like the old times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like back in the day. We got a movie gift card for Christmas a couple years ago. Never used the thing. And then I checked the movie listings. Like, I, I, I don't know any of this. Like, this this doesn't even sound halfway interesting. And I'm, you right. know, for me to go to the movies, I, I wanted to at least look interesting. You know, something yeah. to catch my interest. And there might be, you know, decent stuff playing right now. Like, if, if there is something that's playing right now or something new that, that is good and we should watch, you know, put it in the comments or whatever. But, yeah, we're still kind of sticking around watching watching a lot of the old favorites. Speaking of old favorites, though, this is an old favorite for a lot of people. I, however, had not seen it until just before this review. My first time watching Planet of the Apes. And I've probably mentioned this on the channel before when... There's every once in a while uh, there there'll be this movie that I I know it's popular I know it's you know worshipped or it's very well respected but for whatever reason just never seen it never got around to it that was the case for this up until tonight and ironically well it's, I don't guess it's ironic but somehow had not had the ending spoiled for me um, but you know we'll we'll get into it I've seen Twilight Zone and. Rod Serling, of course, co-wrote this, uh, wrote a lot of the earliest episodes of The Twilight Zone, created The Twilight Zone, and to me, this kind of felt like a feature-length Twilight Zone episode in color, yes. um, and uh, it definitely is, is parallel with the, uh, the Twilight Zone episode from, I think it's, is it the first season? I shot an arrow into the sky. I think I it's so. I think it's the first season of Twilight Zone with pretty much the same ending as this. So I'd seen that ending before, but didn't know that that was a similar ending to this movie. But I still loved it. And of course, we are talking about the classic Planet of the Apes, mm -hmm. not the uh, 2000 or 2001 version uh, by Tim Burton with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, <laughs> Tim Burton was involved in that. I am almost certain he was. Oh, I have no, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he directed it. <laughs> I know that uh, Mark Wahlberg's in it. it something. I'd seen I'd seen that one in theaters with my parents when I was a kid, and uh, all I can tell you about it is that Mark Wahlberg's in it. I uh, I know we rented it uh, back when Blockbuster was still a thing. Yeah. And uh, honestly, it might have been one of the last ones we rented from this Blockbuster, our our local one. And uh, yeah. I, I just remember I fell asleep halfway into it because it was so boring. <laughs> yeah. And then I woke up two-thirds in, and when we get to Abraham Lincoln, I was like, all right, we're done here. Yeah, I do I do have a vague memory of seeing that. But for the most part, I pretty much don't remember that version of Planet of the Apes. So, yeah, uh, go ahead and getting into this. Uh, naturally, this movie's been out since 1967. I don't think we're going to be spoiling it for many people. I know, you know, as Raven just said, there, I guess there yeah. are a few people out there. Yeah, there's some There's some of us out there. Yeah. But uh, from this point on, spoilers, <clears throat> this is a classic. If, if you haven't seen it, definitely check this movie out. Yeah, you're going to hear us, you know, praise this movie quite a bit. And, and it, we've got, like, I mean, at least I have, like, a few little issues with it. They're basically nitpicks, though. Um for the most part, I mean, as we'll explain when we get into it, it it's pretty much a great movie, and you're gonna you're gonna hear us recommend it at the end for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's for maybe people that aren't really familiar with what the plot actually is. What's uh, what's this thing about? Well, our you know story starts with four 
pioneering astronauts. Um, it doesn't really, I can't remember if it actually says what year the movie is supposed to begin, take or like what year they are from. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 1970-something. Yeah, because he says the class of 71, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they're on this mission across the galaxy, not really sure what they're doing, just kind of going to the end of the universe, I guess, and, you know, they're moving far faster than the speed of light. Earth time is accelerating extremely quickly, mm -hmm. but for them, you know, it's only been a few months. So after about 18 months space travel, they are crash landing on a strange planet, and it mm -hmm. just so happens to be the planet of the apes. So yeah, Planet of the Apes. So uh, uh, our main character here that we're following is uh, named Taylor, who's played by Charlton Heston. And uh, we should mention, I guess, that before the crash, the, well, you did mention there were four of them. Um, there, were, there was a woman on board who didn't make it because uh, I guess it would be the pod or that uh, the area. Yes, yeah, the, the, the airlock. It was a, actually a scene taken directly. Again, another from Twilight another Zone, Twilight episode. Zone yeah. episode. The uh, Rip Van, Wil yeah. Rip Rip Van, Van Winkle, Winkle Caper. Caper, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, a scene directly from that, or a shot directly from that, I should say, yeah. where they, they zoom in on this glass case and you know one of their people is already well-decayed skeleton. So... Yeah, so been dead a while. Yeah, so we're left with we're left with three, and um, it's right around the time that they. Well, I don't get. Is it when they first discover water? Well, they not discover water on the planet. They crashed in water, but they find like a waterfall, right? After a while of. Uh... Yeah, they're they're exploring, walking around, just basically trying to figure out where they are and see if they can find anything. Trying to find life. Yeah, yeah, they're essentially looking for life and. Which they do find, like, there's there's sprouts of, like, there, there's plants that are kind of weeds sporadically, but like, they popping say, up here and there. they find one, and where there's one, there's another, and another, and another, which yeah. will come back later on. Yeah, and so they, they, they end up uh, going skinny dipping, which, who wouldn't do that? You crash land on a new planet, that's the first thing we're all going to do, right? But uh, then they notice that uh, somebody's scampering around, stealing their, going through their stuff, stealing their, their materials they brought with them, things like that. And it turns out that there are other humans on this planet, um, but they're not exactly human, not how we think of them. They're a very primitive race. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember, was it... Uh, they're they're chasing them down to get their stuff back, and then that's when we see the apes yeah. come out of the fields, chasing the humans down, and that's kind of when you know we realize with the characters all that you know this other planet that we're on is like completely upside down. Yeah, everything completely backwards. Everything apes are smart. Backwards. And uh, what I love about this compared to the newer Planet of the Apes movies, um, you know, in the newer ones they're just so. They're so serious, you know. It's it's very cold CGI'd apes, and you know it, they're all so very serious. It's a little too dark for the nature of this. I mean, it's like they are already an evil race of, right. uh, you know, of apes. But in this, they're very humanistic. I mean, they laugh. They're they're yeah. having a they're having fun. They're and, and taking it will... pictures. Yeah. For a modern audience, I feel like a lot of people are probably going to find it a little bit corny. I, for, even myself, as soon as I seen it, like as soon as I started to hear the apes talk in English, just like people, and hear them laugh and say things, and there's even a line where an ape says, well, you know what they say, humans human say, human do. yeah, whatever. So it, some of that's a little bit corny and, and hokey, but it's, it's not a turn off. Really, I don't think it's it's not for me. It's something I got used to as I continued to watch the movie, and in hindsight, that's exactly the way it should have been. I mean, you're the this this race of apes. They're well enough advanced. They're that, civilized. Yes. You know, they're civilized. They behave in exactly the way that human society would. Much like um, if you go back <clears throat> to the old Johnny Weissmuller Tarzan movies from the '30s. You know, in the first couple. He's very primitive. You know, he's running with the animals to the jungle. But mm -hmm. as the movies go on, he starts to act 
more civilized, you know, because he's been around humans enough. I remember one, he just kind of props up against a porch or a rail or something, and he's yeah. acting just like a human would at this point. <laughs> I don't think that was ever anything intentional. Right. But, you know, for this movie, yes, at that point, they're going to be, you know, very, very much like us. You mm-hmm. know, they're going to go out, have fun, and joke around with each other. Yeah. And and there are a lot more like humans, even in in those ways. They've they've uh, they also do have a lot of the the negative traits of uh, of humanity. And and as we see, well, actually, uh, Taylor gets shot, and his friend gets shot first. I look like in the back of the head. Right after that, Taylor gets shot in the neck. And immediately after that, we realize that they've taken the the apes have taken him back to their back to their civilization, and they're healing him him up for they're taking care of him, healing him up for presumably to run experiments on him, um, because these ape scientists want to know how human brains work, so they do. Exp- reminds me of another Twilight Zone episode that people are alike all over, you know, which we're, we weren't dealing with apes in that episode, but still very. If you understand, if you've seen that episode, if you've seen the Twilight Zone, you can definitely understand like the the thinking here. Um, the apes are um, they're ex- experimenting on humans, trying to understand how our brains work, and and the thing is, is Taylor can't talk because he's been shot in the throat, but he still kind of acts a bit. He acts more intelligent than what they're used to. They can tell that he's like trying to form words. They can tell he is different. And and of course, once he is able to talk, that he has well, it makes matters worse. Yeah, it, it it's one of those deals where it, like it doesn't seem like anything can work for him. Like they're they're not buying his story. He tells them he's from planet Earth, that he's from essentially the past, and of course they have no reason to believe him. And and the thing about the apes that I find interesting is, again, taking on those human traits is the the religious dogma. And this is something I want to really kind of get into, too, is, like, all the different just layers of social commentary that this movie packs in it. And that was one of the first ones I, I noticed was religious dogma. And I think this movie is definitely trying to make a statement about that once... Once Taylor's actually able to prove to at least a couple of the apes, which uh, one was the scientist that was uh, fixing him, I'm forgetting her name, and then Cornelius, Zero. her, yeah, yeah, and then Cornelius, which was her, like, I guess, co-worker, or... It's her fiancé. Was it? Okay, I guess yeah. I didn't pick up on that part, but... That's the one they keep kissing all through it. Yeah, that's right, they keep <laughs> awkwardly kissing, like, just stuffed animals just being mushed <laughs> together, but, uh... But anyway, and of course Cornelius, it takes some time for him to to become a believer too, but he's trying so hard to hang on to this faith because the basically the prevailing law on this Well, planet, he's he's more afraid of being convicted of heresy. Like that's right. why he's just shut it shuts him mm-hmm. down. Like he doesn't really yeah. you know, he he knows what he's found, mm-hmm. but he wants to keep it secret because he's he's afraid of you know, And but and it still kind of ties into the, the dogmatic ideas of the apes who have this prevailing law of the land that seems to be this just widely accepted thing among all the apes across the whole planet is that some creator, some god, which I don't... Do they, do they ever use the word god? Yes. Okay. So they're, that god made the ape in his image and that man is no more than an animal, a, a beast in the field, as the Bible might would say. You know, and... Uh, we're in inferior race. And um, also that there's this forbidden region on the planet where it was written in the law never to go. Um, that life couldn't exist there, and we don't know what's there, but we're going to stay away from it. And as the truth kind of starts to unfold, as Taylor s- starts to just reveal his intelligence, reveal his humanity, there's this... This approach that the apes take where they're just so unwilling to accept any sort of scientific reasoning because they have proof right in front of their face and they even uh, when they when they try uh, when they take um, Cornelius and say your name again Zero. Zero, to, when they take take them to court with Taylor um, 
to try them for heresy because they've been convinced of Taylor's story, and they're trying to come forward and say, hey, like whatever we think we m might know isn't necessarily the case because he's here, and there's got to be truth to what he's saying, and and the elders are, are, are the, the elder apes are literally sitting there covering their ears. Just just know well, this this can be the truth. It's they're they're doing the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Like one covers his ears, one covers his mouth, one covers his eyes. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even yeah. notice all three of them were doing yeah. something different. Yeah. But still, yeah, that that kind of drives the point home even more. Is uh, is that they're they're e that some people, in these case the apes, will not accept any truth, any scientific reasoning whatsoever, no matter what's put in front of them, is just so holding on dogmatically to this this faith that what's written must be true and nothing can alter that, nothing can interfere. And just the the way religion and science has sort of always had that battle. Like, I think this movie makes a strong commentary about that, too. I mean, Rod Serling, even on The Twilight Zone, you know, he always took away with social commentary that, you know, it's, it, you can tell a story without, you know, being so on the nose. That's why I don't mm -hmm. like the latest Twilight Zone series, the one that Jordan Peele hosted, because it, everything was too on the nose. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the Jordan and, Peele ones, but even the original series had some of that. But, I mean, the original series, though, was more, I mean, you could tell... Like I said, you can tell a completely different story mm -hmm. with these deeper meanings. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you to interpret what exactly is coming across here. Because, because there's no actual statement being made mm -hmm. in for the matter that there's things hinted at as, say, like what you're going on about this religious dogma. You know... They're so, uh, Cornelius and Zera are so adamant that it was evolution that brought, you know, the apes evolved from the man. Mm -hmm. But then as we later find out is that, well, that wasn't even the case there. Mm -hmm. Man was just, you know, wiped out. The, that race of man was wiped out. Yeah. And then an intelligent ape. Yeah, about it reversed itself. Yeah, so. yeah, and uh, yeah. That's what as we like really start to talk about the end. That definitely is is what ends up being the case. Um, but and Cornelius is like what leads him to the theory of that theory of evolution is that we know that in this forbidden zone, at what point in time he ventured off and made an archaeological discovery and found some old bones from an ape that was very primitive yes he's very he sure was very primitive and but then found at a deeper level found human bones mm -hmm. of an advanced society right so and of course as we know with uh you know uh with scientific data like the deeper something's buried the older it is so he's got the theory that possibly apes evolved from man and then, of course, there's the, the, the doll, the little yeah. human baby doll that they find there. So, Taylor pretty much realizes that this might be kind of his only chance at proving his story. And so, uh, he wants to go to this archaeological site that Cornelius found to see what's actually there. And, of course, they're tailed by the bad guys, the damn dirty apes. And... And this is right around the time where we get to we get to the climax of the movie where we really start to see other social commentaries when the truth is brought out and you know leading all the way up to this final shot and that's where I think the best discussion really comes in. And I mean you know all through this movie just as on the Twilight Zone um, there are I know Rod Serling is not the only writer of this. I, I keep yeah. bringing him up because that's the name we recognize so mm -hmm. well. But, you know, he was always very ballsy about what he would say. You know, from the beginning of this movie, it's obvious that our character of Taylor 
has a very bleak outlook on mankind in general. And yeah, from the beginning of the movie, that's yeah, set up. As he's reporting back to Earth, um, you know, he's saying, well, the people who sent us on this mission are long dead. Mankind is a new breed by now. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we'll find out they are. But, um, you know, he's saying maybe, maybe you're a species that doesn't war with your brother so much. And all through the movie, that's what the apes are afraid of, of course. They know good and well how man is. Mm -hmm. And we are always at war. We'll mm -hmm. kill for, for lust, for greed, mm -hmm. for your brother's land, as all, you know, all the examples they give. Yeah, that, uh, that was a pretty close paraphrasing there of what's written in the law that the, that the apes abide by. And that's, once we get to that point, I think that's where we realize that the apes, you know, they're the antagonists here, but you really start to see their side. And even um, when, what's the, 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 the main bad guy, the doctor? Dr. Zayas. Yes. Um, when he's finally tied down, because Taylor does tie him down um, so that he can escape off into the forbidden region, because he wants to go out there and see what's actually out there. There's been this archaeological discovery made. He still has questions. See, because Dr. Zayas is afraid the entire movie that there's another breed in another jungle beyond the forbidden zone. So he's like, well, maybe you know, I can inhabit this place. There must mm. be something else out there. Yeah, so he wants to see, he wants to try to find other answers to these new questions that he has, so he goes riding off. Um, but just before he does, when uh, Cornelius is reading out of the book, I think it's Cornelius. The scroll. Re yeah, reading the scroll of this law that we keep hearing about, and he starts to describe humanity and what you said, they'll, they'll kill for this. They'll, basically, mankind is a disease. And as he's reading it, like you see a shot... Uh, you know, of Charlton of, Heston's face. Just, yeah, his face, yeah. and it's like that—that that look of, that's absolutely right. Yeah. That is how we are, you know. And sure enough, just a few minutes later, he's about to realize that he never actually left Earth at all. Yeah. This is the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Of course, we, uh, you know, one of the most iconic endings of all time. That again, I, I don't see how it slipped past some people at this point. Don't know how it but, slipped past yeah. me. I, I have seen the image. I'll say I've I've seen images of that shot mm. on the beach with the um, I almost said Mona Lisa for statue some reason. The statue, the Statue of Liberty. I've seen that on DVD covers I've, or something. I've I've seen that shot, but I just never, having not seen the movie, knew specifically that that. That was the giveaway at the end. That was the twist. Yeah. And, of course, you know, one of the most, uh, you know, the iconic lines mm -hmm. at the end. And, I mean, that's... You blew it all up. Yeah. It's it's just so ingrained in our pop culture at this point. as Just as much as, you know, Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's father. I, I don't see how some of these things can just slip yeah. past us today. Especially, like, you know, someone who is as well knowledge in movies as you are as well versed yeah. it's just one of the ones that slip by me man i don't i don't really know but i know how you feel there's people out there still i've talked to people that don't know didn't know the end of psycho we know somebody that doesn't know the end of the sixth sense yeah so I, every once in a while you'll get one that for whatever reason will just slip by your radar but the, something that I, that I was thinking about this interesting about this movie is this movie could very well be a prediction oh yeah they're they're still almost a couple thousand years still of this movie having a chance to 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 come true. Yeah, and it's a, kind of like the opposite of Terminator. Yeah, and it, and it makes it timeless to me. Like it's a story that you know because mankind doesn't change. Right, and it's uh it's something that is always it's going to stand the test of time because it's going to apply to every generation in in some way. And there's still time for it to come true. And what would be the most ironic thing is. As popular as this movie is, it comes true. Oh, yeah. Somehow, we made a movie about our ending and still couldn't avoid it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I may I may go as far to put this in my top ten of all time. I would you know, I'd really have to consider that list. But um, 
you know, going on to some of the sequels of this, uh, the second one I'm not too crazy about, and the third, fourth, fifth, you know, I actually like those for what they are. I This movie is better that it draws your own interpretation of what happened to mankind, mm -hmm. how all this happened, you know, how, how it did get turned around, and the apes taking over and becoming so intelligent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the fourth and fifth ones kind of explain that away for you. It tells you how it happened, which it's a fun movie. You know, mm -hmm. they, they are kind of fun just to see it happen. But, you know, I do like just that vagueness of really making you think, wow, how did this happen? Yeah. Like, wh wh what took place to where we got so, you know, destructive of our own kind? We blow our own planet up, uh, probably by nuclear war yeah, or that, some kind. Yeah, that definitely seems like something that's just better left open-ended mm -hmm. for the individual imagination. I mean, because, like, I, I assumed, you know, nuclear war, but yeah. just that, just not knowing, you know. I mean, possibly it, it nuclear the, war, it mutated an ape to where it could, it yeah. was very smart, and there you go. I mean, you almost don't really need an answer. It's just, like, humans are terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah, I accept that. But you know. as, you know, as it goes on, like we said, these apes are very... They're, they're very humanistic in their traits, their qualities. Mm -hmm. They are civilized. They have funerals. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they go out hunting, taking pictures of each other on the hunt. You know, they just, have a zoo. Yeah, they have zoos. <laughs> all this. I mean, they they all do this, whatever for fun. They're living their lives, having a great time, but they're still just as judgmental mm -hmm. because uh, there's that's a very interesting quality of this movie is that. You know, this is another social commentary that the apes are in class systems. Mm -hmm. You have the chimps, you have the gorillas, uh, whatever Dr. Zayas is supposed to be. Uh, I want to say they're orangutans, but I think Charlton Heston calls them baboons at some point. Calls them a bloody baboon, but I think yeah. it's just... <laughs> using it as a slur, a racial slur. They, <laughs> but um, they all just kind of look like apes to me, and maybe maybe that's racist. I don't know, but but they're um, you know they they even say that Doctor Zayas looks down upon the chimpanzees. Yeah, and they're all you know, it, it is just much like our society. I mean, however we can divide ourselves. Yeah, and, and there is a class identity system, groups. Whereas yeah. Charlton Heston sees them all as apes. Mm-hmm. They're seeing each other in different races, in different, you know, societal structures. This movie is so smart in the way that it just approaches humanistic issues and just life issues in general. Like, this this movie can really be looked at as, like, a, a study into the human soul, almost, or I mean, into human thinking. It's almost as if the more advanced a generation becomes, or, a, you know, species becomes... <sighs> We take steps back. Yeah. You know, because we're every, step, every step forward, two back. Yeah, you yeah. start think, looking down on other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is the um, the line at the end where he ties up Dr. Zayas and says, don't do that. It's humiliating. Like, well, like you did it to me. Mm -hmm. She says, well, we thought you were, uh, we thought you were inferior. inferior. So, so, like, that made it okay. Yeah. So, yeah. like, okay, well, you're still, you're treating these humans as garbage you know yeah so it, it's okay to do it to them but you know don't do that to us yeah so like, i mean like it, their cattle yeah i mean it's still the same it's the exact same concept of okay well the apes progressed but they might not be at war with each other but hey they're they're well on their path yeah you know they're separating themselves yeah and fast forward another couple thousand years maybe the apes have blown themselves up and yeah. you know the, the squirrels yeah. are they, they, they're, they're the next chance, you know, yeah. Got or it'd be like the South Park episode where it's like uh, otters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sea otter. Yeah, something else I want to comment about uh, is just from a technical perspective. This movie is really well done. The beginning few shots, like, I, I just, I got to call it like the Sam Raimi stuff. It, it immediately made me picture Evil Dead, or even Evil Dead 2, um, and... Uh, not just the the fast zooming and just all the the crazy camera shots and moving around and everything like that, but 
um, where it'll like zoom in on something and then just suddenly stop and everything will look like flat. There's a there's a shot in Evil Dead 2 that's that's just like that. And I've heard Sam Raimi talk about technically like how they achieved that shot. But anyway, it made me think of that. Um, very creative from just a filmmaking standpoint. And I don't know if it's just because of the Blu-ray. It looked great. Oh, I mean, it, like, it's, it was great a, on whatever format. It's it was beautiful. A, it was a beautiful. I don't know who the cinematographer was, or but it was a very beautiful looking. Because one, one of my favorite shots is toward the beginning, when uh, they are they're wa- walking through the desert of the Forbidden Zone before they get to the jungle, and they're so tiny, way up on this cliff, and you know they're they're these pioneers of Earth mm-hmm. in this brand new frontier, mm-hmm. but they're still so insignificant. Yeah. They're so tiny walking through this giant. Landscape. Yeah, this huge, this huge yeah. wasteland almost. And they, they think they're, they, even they think they're superior because Charlton Heston says, when they first run into the humans, like, well, this is the best they've got. We'll be running this place in a couple months. Yeah. So there's, yeah. I mean, it makes a comment about like just human arrogance too, mm-hmm. and and just our, uh, just our foolishness almost to be so arrogant in an environment where you are so small and you don't have the control you think you have. And like you were even bringing up the question of like, well why even go on this mission and it's it's very much similar to today you know in, in the movie uh when he's talking about uh landon i believe was his part one of his partner's names um he said you did it because you wanted to be eternal mm-hmm. you, know, you wanted to live forever and you're out living everyone in the human race somewhere there's a bronze statue of you probably done rotted away by now mm-hmm. but the same thing can be said today. You know, we're in a society now where there is serious discussion about a manned mission to Mars. Yeah. But it's well known that that's going to be a one-way mission. Yeah, you're not coming back from it, so it's uh, so just to fathom that, yeah. to know, okay, I'm never coming back to planet Earth. So, and, and why do it? I mean, it, it takes an, a level of arrogance in a way. Like, why would you mm-hmm. do it? And... That could be another thing that, you know, uh, maybe Serling was hinting on that, or um, the the other writer, I, without looking it up, I can't even think of the other writer's that name. That poor guy. Yeah, or even in, I've never read the novel, so I don't really know much about the storyline of that. Yeah, no, I assume yeah. it's decently close, but who knows? Yeah, we were kind of, we don't know anything about the novel, but just based on the way the movie played out, it just seems so up Rod Serling's alley that I gotta imagine the book is probably very, very different from yeah. this. Um, I mean, it could have been another thing because there's a lot about space travel in the Twilight Zone mm-hmm. because that was something brand new. You know, we weren't. You know, it was just starting. Yeah, I mean, this you know this movie <clears throat> come out in '68, and so we had we'd been in space, mm-hmm. but we hadn't been to the moon yet. Yeah. So this is still. That even back then, that was a, a a statement to say. Well, you know, what if it doesn't work? Is it mm-hmm. is it worth it going out there? Yeah, I mean, it, to some people, it is like that exploration, that next step in mankind. Mm-hmm. But there is a bit of arrogance to know. Okay, you know, if you die out there, it's a good possibility. But hey, you will be immortalized. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to be always known as the person who did this for like here's humanity. the thing. We might not know after the first two astronauts to land on to walk on the moon. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, mm-hmm. yeah, Norm Macdonald has a good bit on that. On the other ten guys, yeah, no yeah. one knows their names. Yeah. But um, besides them, we don't know anyone else who's walked on the moon. Mm-hmm. But we know the crew of the Challenger, the crew of Columbia. Mm-hmm. We don't might not know their names, but we remember those space shuttles. They all died. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that sticks with us. You remember those that died. Something where some, you know, whatever went wrong. Yeah. So you can really pick this this movie apart in several different ways and find all kinds of just deep social commentaries and that are all still relevant discussions today, I think. So, I mean, if there's something that we just not thinking of or an insight that you have that we're not bringing up I mean put it in the comments because I love this movie I'm always going to be down to just 
you know, learn more, hear more, you know, from other people that that want to talk about it and what their insights are. But that's just some of the things that I observed. And yeah, this is something I'll go back and rewatch again. Um, you know, probably sooner rather than later. Yeah. I would like, and, and you know, I'm interested enough to check out some of the sequels. This is a good once a year for me. I, I usually go back and watch this at least once a year. Um, I could see myself doing that. Yeah, and uh, the reason we chose this today for our first video back, uh, you know, we just wanted to get back into things, not really go into a real deep review of anything that you know might be more newer to a lot of people out there. I feel that the majority of you know big movie buffs have seen this. So, you know, a lot of this is probably nothing new to you. But, you know, just wanted to kind of get back into things. Uh, for, so you remember how this show works. And, you know, yeah, we're still kind of in our same set. We haven't really yeah. expanded on anything yet uh, for this show. I've kind of been working on stuff for the other shows. and We're doing rock star stuff, too. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we we do a lot of other stuff besides this. We, we are we are musicians. Yeah, yeah. Give us give us time. We'll 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 catch up. We'll catch up with you. We'll get a we'll get a nice little set going at some point and everything. But, but uh, as for the rest of this season, you know, uh, there's quite a bit we want to touch on. We do want to go over some some more classics, some rewatches of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Raven's going to show me a few things I haven't seen, and vice versa as well. And uh, we do want to do some more, you know, uh, in-depth looks on, say, like a Vincent Price overview. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. You know, picking an actor. Where we can have, like, a, a set of yeah. films to to watch together. Much and, like our, uh, as we did at Halloween and our Christmas movies. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we will have some other guest stars on the show, as well as, of course, some of my other shows. Um I plan to have Raven on an episode of On the Road with Vincent mm -hmm. here in the upcoming months. And, uh, you know, I uh, definitely want to get a few different people in on this show as well. Uh, just a few movies. I think that we can, uh, a few, especially other band members, could have some good insight on. Yeah. And uh, something else. Um, if this is something you might like to see, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. Um uh, Raven hasn't really started on this yet, but um, our bassist, Marshall Lawless, and I underwent this uh, very grueling task, and I actually went a little deeper into it than he did. Oh, I um, know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I actually made my list of my top movie of the year for 100 years, from 1920 to 2020. That is an undertaking. Yeah, one movie per year that I would say is the best movie of each year. Um, if that's some kind of video series you would like to see, let us know in the comments. I would actually be more than excited to share that with you. It took me long enough to come up with it. I think a few people ought to hear my hear my opinions on it. Yeah, I think a couple people are probably already like in the comments. Yep, bust it out. Yeah. What is it? All right. <laughs> So again, uh, I know this was kind of a, you know, little quicker review. Wanted to have a little extra time to talk about the season to come. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Midnight Movie Reviews. We'll see you all next time. Yep. Stay away from those damn dirty apes. <laughs>